that prayer before he went to the cross, a high priestly prayer that the Father had given him authority over all flesh. That word authority means to rule, exercise judgment as he will, but to give eternal life unto as many as the Father had given him. And so here's the judgment part. Any that hear this message of Christ and are left to themselves and do not glorify him, he says, I have slain them by the words of my mouth. There's a message of condemnation, as Paul spoke of, a savor of death unto death that goes forth with the preaching of the gospel. And thy judgments are as the light that goes forth. It's a light not for salvation, but a light for condemnation, like John said. And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, that men have loved darkness rather than light because their deeds are evil. Lord says there, for I desired mercy and not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. This was what our Lord cited to the Pharisees in his day, who were proud of their self-righteous works, and they had a condescending attitude toward the people that they ruled over. They ruled in their own pompous self-righteous thoughts of themselves. And here's where the Lord said, I desire mercy and not sacrifice. And anybody that is caused by the Spirit of God to hear the law, they're going to see that Christ alone has fulfilled it. But those that don't hear it, what do they do? They set about to establish their own righteousness before God. And they look down their nose at all others. I will tell you, that's how most people read verse 1 of Proverbs 28. The wicked, oh, that's them out there. The righteous, oh, that's me. Because I'm a pretty good person, I think. I, I make every effort to please God, and I go to church, and I pray, and I give. All this thinking. But both thoughts are wrong and to be condemned. When we read this aright by the Spirit of God, the wicked, that's me left to myself in my natural state, I would be one of these that flees when no man pursues. It's talking there about the conscience and how men and women left to their own conscience, even though outwardly they might seem to be somewhat stable and they might think themselves to be good, and yet that heart does not lie. And so they flee when no man pursues. There's, there's not a voice. There's not anybody coming up to them saying, you know, you're a wicked person. In fact, they would be appalled if anybody ever said that. But their heart tells them so. And so they flee, just like Adam and Eve in the garden. When they heard the voice of God, they fled. They hid back in the part of the garden where God had said originally that they could Partake. You can believe what Paul preached to you about Christ, but, and see, here's the perversion. When men would take and add something to the work of Christ or take from it. Here he says in verse 6, Galatians 1, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto what? Another gospel, which is not another but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. That's what the perversion is. But it's not to be dealt with lightly as we read on, though we or an angel from heaven, it doesn't matter who you say you heard this from or got it from, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you. Let him be accursed. It's a faith that damns souls. We said before, so now I say again, if any man preach another, any other gospel of you, then that ye have received, let him be a curse. The only ones that can discern between the truth and error are going to be those in whom Christ has put his spirit. He said that his sheep would not follow a stranger, not when they hear his voice. But you're not going to be able to convince these others of the danger. And they're going to continue down with this, their faith. Believing they're the Lord's and they're not. 